Hey guys, my name's Matt and welcome to lesson four of the Game Gengu Genki series. In this video, you're gonna be learning all of the grammar that you need to know for lesson four of the Genki textbook. However, we're gonna be going through with a bunch of examples from video games so that you can get a really strong feel contextually how these pieces of language are used, as well as having really simple, concise explanations of the grammar points that kind of clear up some of the confusing ways some of these things are explained in the actual textbook itself. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how aru and iru can be used to talk about where something is. We're going to be looking at lots of different language to talk about the location of something, like in front, mae, behind, ushiro, and lots of other ones. We're going to be looking at the past tense, as well as the negative tense of des, the past tense of verbs, a little bit more about how the mo particle can be used with double particles like nimo and demo, how to express duration of activity with kun, how to express quantity with taksan, and finally a little bit more of a look at the two uses of the to particle. So in this video there is an absolute ton of examples seeing how each of these pieces of grammar are used. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have these two really useful verbs that can be used to express that something exists. Aru, aru. and iru. Now, in this phrase that we see from the textbook, something ga aru, or something ga iru, or the polite form, here, this is used to talk about the existence of something. Kind of like in English where there is or there are. And really simply, the difference between aru and iru is aru is used with non-animate objects. That means something that doesn't live, something that doesn't have a sort of life form to it. The other one, iru, this is used with living things. So if you see something that has a soul or a life or is alive, you would use iru, not aru. Aru is for inanimate objects, things that are not alive. So for example, you could say something ga aru to express that something exists, a thing or a place. Ga aru is the casual way of saying something exists, and arimas is something exists in polite speech. So really simply, you follow this ga particle after the thing that exists, and then followed by aru or arimas. Now, it doesn't have to just be that something exists, you could also talk about whether you possess or have something. So literally this would be, you know, there is a dun dun dun, but you're just saying that you have or that you own a dun dun dun. Now, it doesn't have to be used with physical things, you could also use it with, for example, events, like events will take place. Like, for example, you have a class. Nihongo no krasu ga aru. Or you have a test. Testo ga arimasu. It doesn't have to be with physical things, just anything that's non-animate. And on the flip side, if you want to talk about something that's alive, instead of aru, you just use iru. Or instead of arimas, you use imas. So a literal translation would be something like there is dun dun dun. They exist, right? Now you could also use this, for example, when you say that you possess something. Like for example, if you have a friend. Or the same thing. Tomodachi ga imas. Tomodachi ga iru. I have a friend. So this could both be meaning that there is a friend or that you have a friend. It depends on the context which one you would kind of translate in your head at meaning. Now, if you wanted to use this with an actual defined place to express where that thing is, whether animate or inanimate, all you would need to do is follow the place with the ni particle. So place ni something ga imas 
オはありますここにも作業台があるこの部屋には3台のカメラがあるこの町には学者がいるでしょここには鬼がいる And if you wanted to express that something inanimate didn't exist or you didn't have, you could say something ga nai. Or in the polite form, something ga arimasen. And the same thing for living things and animate objects with iru, you could say if something didn't exist or you didn't have something, you could say something ga inai. Naruto ga itta hazu da! Kokoro ni honmono no nakama ga inai no ga ichiban itai n da to! Are? Ne, ano hito ga inai! Or in the polite form, something ga imasen. So da ne. 準備できてない人はいるはいはいはい教授がいません Next we have describing where those things are So we have a little bit more language used to express the exact location, the exact position of where those things exist So in the previous lessons we learnt how to say where something is We have the question Something はどこですか Where is メタルギアはどこだ And then we could say something wa koko desu. Something is right here. Omae no uchi wa koko da. Or something wa soko desu. Something is over there. Tokugawa to mafia no nerai wa soko da. But let's say we wanted to be a little bit more specific with the exact location of where something is, perhaps in relation to another item or another thing. Well, this is very easy with some of these pieces of language that we have here in this list. Things like migi and hidari for right and left, mae, ushiro for in front and behind, naka and ue for inside and on top of, shita for below, chikaku for near to, and tonari for next to. So, with all of these location words, we can use simply with place no location word des. To express that something is in that specific location in regards to the thing that it's connected to. For example, Hoteru no mae desu. Hoteru is a hotel, no mae is in front of, and then desu is the polite way of saying to be. So, it is in front of the hotel. So, like this chart here from the textbook, X wa y no location word desu. X wa y no migi desu. So X, as for X, it is on the right migi of Y. Or X wa, as for X, y no naka desu. As for X, it is inside Y. Y no naka. So here we can see a combination of the wa particle, that's as for whatever comes before it. As for X, so regarding X, we're going to talk about X. Y not, so it's the possessive particle, so of Y, and then Naka inside, or Maya in front, or Ushido behind, so the behind, or the front, or the inside of Y, and then Des is just the polite way of saying to be. So as for X, it is in that location of Y. So this is really useful language to express where something is. Like for example, something not. Something no hidari desu. Something no mae desu. Something no ushiro desu. Something no Naka desu. Where? Naka desu yo. Kono mole no naka desu. Something no ue desu. Max, arigato. Tasukatta. USB wa tsukue no ue da yo. Something no shita desu. Metal Gear wa sono shita da. Isoi de kure. Something no chikaku desu. Keshita wa toride no chikaku da to itta na. Homunculus wo taoshita basho no chikaku da. And something no 
隣です。集合場所は海の家の隣だよ。So a lot of really useful language. Now, if you wanted to be even more specific where something is, perhaps in relation to two different objects, you could say x は as for x, y と z, so y and z の something des or something da. この建物とブッチャーズヤードの間だ。Well, like this example sentence, you could say x は as for x, y と z の so y and z's something, and for example, either. So here it's in between des to be. So as for x, it is between y and z. So that is a whole lot of language used to express where something is, where something exists. Now, if you wanted to actually express where you do an action, this is a little bit more complicated. You would need to use the de particle. This marks the place of action. So, for example, you could say something no mae de, so in front of that something. And then you have the verb that follows. For example, pizza o taberu, right? So you eat pizza in front of dun 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 no mae, in front of that thing. For example, minna no mae de pizza o taberu. I eat pizza in front of all of you. <laughs> okay, so the next piece of language we have is simply the past tense and the negative tense of des. Now, this is a little bit complicated with the way that it's explained in the textbook, so let's clear things up a bit. If you remember, des is simply the polite form of da. And there is actually also another form which is more a literary form, de adu. We don't need to dive too deeply into this, but this is useful information when you look at the conjugations. So, des is just a polite marker. It also holds a meaning inside of it like to be or is. Like, watashi wa matto desu. As for me, I'm mad. So, what about if you want to say in the past? So, you can actually use des in the past form. This is simply deshita. Mizu no crystal. So instead of des, whenever you would use des to say to be, you would just use deshita to say it was. For example, watashi wa daigaku no gakusei deshita. So I was a university student. This implies that I'm no longer a university student, it's the past tense of des. So you simply replace des with deshita to say that something is in the past. The bit that gets a bit more tricky is the negative form. So here in the textbook, the way they explain this is the negative form they say is janai des. Now, this is true, but it's also not true. Technically, des doesn't actually have a negative form, really. This janai des is actually the negative form of dearu. The ja is a contraction of dewa nai. Dewa aru, de aru. Tada no kuni dewa nai. Jiu to kibo no shoujo. Honin janai. So, without overcomplicating things, that's actually where it comes from. And this is where you would say that something doesn't exist, or that something is not the case. Janai or Dewanai. Now, we can see here in the both the positive des and the negative janai des, both of them have the des. How confusing. Well, it's not really, just the des is just adding politeness to whatever you're saying. That's it. Des itself doesn't actually have a negative form. Here we have to use janai or dewanai to express that something is not. 
Which means if you want, you actually have an option. You can simply just say something janai. It is not that. Gakuse janai. I am not a student. Or if you want it to be a little bit more formal or even a little bit more written speech, Gakuse dewanai. This is a little bit more of a formal way of speaking or a formal way of writing. Whereas a more colloquial, a more spoken way of saying this would just be janai. <laughs> ja is a contraction of dewa. Dewa, ja. Dewa nai, janai. And so, if you wanted to make this more polite, simply chuck on the des on the end. The exact same meaning, something janai or something janai des, it's just the des one is polite. And so if you wanted to say the past negative, so it was not, all you have to do now is turn the janai into its past form, janakata. janakata. And then again, you have a choice whether you want to add des or not, whether you want to be polite or not. Remember that des is used to make the sentence polite. Now, you may be thinking, hang on a second, janai by itself, that's kind of a bit casual, right? That's true. Actually, if you wanted, you could make this more polite just by itself, just by saying ja arimasen. Or dewa arimasen. So there's actually a pretty long list here of kind of levels of politeness and which part of it you're actually going to make polite and whether you put the politeness at the end with des or not. But just remember very, very simply, dewanai is the formal or written way of saying it is not. Janai is the colloquial way, the spoken way. If you want to make either of these polite, just add des to the end. Dewanai des or janai des. And if you wanted, you could actually make this a little bit more polite. Instead of janai des, because nai is actually the casual form, you could say ja arimasen, or the past tense, ja arimasen deshita. If it's overwhelming, don't worry, you will definitely get a hang of this over time as it's incredibly common in almost every sentence to see these pieces of language. Okay, next we have the past tense of polite verbs. Now we'll learn how to turn verbs in the polite form, the must form, into the past form. Just so you know, we will cover how to turn casual verbs into the past form in lesson 9. However, as it's much more complicated than the must form, we'll cover the polite must form first. So this is incredibly simple and one of the reasons why the Genki textbook teaches you the polite form before the casual form is due to how simple it is to conjugate at the very beginning of your Japanese language journey. To make a verb in the polite form into the past form, like to return home, kaerimasu, into returned home. Simply replace mas with mashita. That's it. Super simple. All verbs in the polite form conjugate as simple as that. Tabemas, tabemashita. So just replace must with mashita and you can turn verbs into the past tense in polite speech. Another thing you can do with the past tense in the polite form is to express the negative. So just quickly, the negative form of mas is masen. Kuno-san, 
So to eat, tabemas. To not eat, tabemasen. Simply replace mas with masen to make that a negative statement. Ikimas to go, ikimasen to not go. But now, if we want to combine this with the past tense, we need to use the past form of des at the end. Making it masen deshta, the negative plus the past. So the past form for polite verbs is mashta, the polite negative is masen, and the polite past negative is masen deshta. So that's pretty simple, and later in lesson 9, you'll learn how to conjugate normal verbs into the past tense, like taberu into tabeta, suru into shita, kiku into kita. But for now, just remember that if you see this ta at the end of a verb, this expresses that it's the past tense form, mas mashita, or the negative form, masen masen deshita. So now on to the mort particle. So we've already learned how the mort particle can be used to say also or to. And so when we use it to express also and to, what we're actually doing is we're replacing a different particle with the mort particle. For example, watashi wa iku. As for me, I will go. Watashi wa ikimasu. Well, if you want to say, as for me, I'll also go, you would say, Watashi mo iku. Oh, mo so we replace the wa particle with the mo particle, right? Now, you can do this as well with the o particle. Perhaps you bought something. Something o kaimashita. And if you want to say, you also bought something, you could say, something mo. So you replace the ought particle with the mo to make it from you bought something to you also bought something. However, this is just with those two particles wa and o that you can replace completely with the mo. If you're going to be talking about the ni particle, or the de particle, these particles hold really important information that you can't just drop. So what you need to use instead is the mo particle after ni and after de. For example, you go to Kyoto. Kyoto ni iku. Maybe you also go to Osaka. Osaka mo iku. No, no, no. Osaka ni mo iku. Kore. So you need to have the ni particle here because this expresses the direction. If you don't have that, you don't know where the direction is. That's why you need to use both particles and not replace completely. The same thing with the de particle. The de particle is a really important particle to express the location of action. For example, cafe de tabeta. You ate at the cafe. If you said cafe mo tabeta, no, 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 that means you also ate the cafe. <laughs> You're some sort of monster. So if you replace the de completely with mo, the meaning completely changes. So if you want to keep that meaning that you ate at the cafe, but maybe you want to say that I ate also at the cafe, so maybe you ate at two different places, here you need to follow that de particle with the mo particle. Cafe de mo tabeta. So, to summarize, you can replace the wa particle and the o particle with mo. However, you cannot replace the ni particle or the de particle with mo. You have to follow it after. Otherwise, the meaning changes completely. Next, we have a useful piece of language here to express the duration of an activity. So, for example, let's say you wanted to talk about how many hours you did an activity. You can do this with this very useful piece of language, jikan. This is for the period of time. All you have to do is put the amount of time before 
Jikan to show how long you did an action. So you waited for one hour. Ichijikan machimashita. Now, let's say that you didn't wait for exactly one hour, but about one hour. If you wanted to express this, all you have to do is use the same expression, ichijikan, but this time follow with gurai. This means about. So, ichijikan gurai benkyoshita. I studied for about one hour. And you can even add Han after Jikan. So Jikan Han, for example, San Jikan Han, to express half. So three hours and a half. San Jikan, three hours and a half. Han. So, for example, let's say you slept for eight and a half hours, you could say, And so, if you wanted, you could combine all of these pieces of language together, both jikan, han, and gurai, uh, to say about half of that hour. For example, about one and a half hours. みなみしれ。少しお休みになられたらいかがでしょうか。もう Next, we have a super useful piece of language to express the quantity of something. And all you have to do is just use this simple word, takusan. This expresses the quantity of something. You can put this both before a noun, or after the o particle. This has a very similar meaning, like this example sentence from your textbook. I took many photos. Well, you could also say, So see how you can move Taksan to different locations. It has a very similar meaning. And you can also use this takusan to say that there is, like with aru and iru, like we've learned from this lesson, in a very similar way. For example, something ga takusan aru. There is a lot of that thing. You could also say takusan something ga aru. There is a lot of that thing. Finally, we have the top particle. So, this has been a big lesson already. This one's quite simple. We've already seen a little bit of how we can use this top particle. So, top can be used to simply just say and. For example, Nihongo to Ego, both Japanese and English. So the to is here and. Pizza and pasta. Pizza to pasta. Cats and dogs. Neko to inu. Ore to aru to kaasan to mata tanoshiku kurasera nara. Kaasan datte yorokonde kureru yo. But to also has another function. Together with. To san wa. So if you wanted to say that you did an action together with someone or something, you would use the top particle following that person or thing that you did something together with. For example, watashi wa, as for me, anata to, with you, poro o mita. 
we saw Polo. <laughs> so this is an action that we're doing together, right? So here you simply have the top particle follow who you did that action together with. And there you have all of the grammar in lesson four of the Genki textbook. So some of this stuff was a little bit overwhelming with the amount of examples. And I understand why the textbook decided to go with a really simple approach of just kind of not really telling you everything and just kind of keeping a few things hidden from you so that you don't get overwhelmed with the explanations of why it is that certain way. However, I've always felt like I want that information. I used to always ask all the questions when I was in the classroom, like, why is it that way? Why is it not? And if I didn't get that answer, I felt frustrated. And so that's why I feel like in these videos, I really want to let you guys know exactly why something is a certain way, even if it's overwhelming, because the earlier you're exposed to something, the quicker you're going to be able to pick it up and get comfortable with it. So a lot of this language wasn't too difficult. For example, aru. Do you remember what that is? Aru is for something to exist that is not living, not animate. Iru is something that is animate, something that's living. Something ga aru, something ga iru. We learn all of these different pieces of language that we can see where something is, like location-wise, like in front, behind, on top, and below. We learn the past tense and the negative tense of des, which can be a little bit complicated when you realize that the des itself doesn't actually conjugate other than deshta. Um, everything else, it actually uses janai. This comes from dewanai. And if you want to make that polite, then you can add des on at the end. We also learned how to use the past tense of verbs, and we had a little bit of revision as well with negative forms of verbs, as well as how the more particle can be used with two particles, quite useful information, and then some not too difficult language with duration of activity with jikan, quantity with takusan, and finally how talk can be used both to say and or with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. If you like this video and if you found it helpful for you in your Japanese studies and maybe help clear some things up or maybe just you found it entertaining, then consider liking, subscribing. And if you really love this video, then consider coming to join us on Patreon and come say hi on the Game Gengo Discord community. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you very much for watching the videos. And as always, I'll see you all again in the next video. See ya.